romantic relationships. Okay, let's talk about that for the next 20 minutes or so less. All right. So we all, in terms of romantic relationships, let's see. We all want at some level, it seems, some level of romance in a relationship. And you can interpret romance to be what you want it to be, be it candles, flowers, or just be there for me when I need you to maybe provide some food or something. <laughs> At some level, some would argue a very basic level of support would be seen as romance. But we all have this amazing views of what romance is. And it's understandable why. Because we live in an age where we are bombarded by social media, movies, entertainment, and commercialism, which argues for Valentine's Day, Friendship's Day, name it as a day, okay? And what happens is, from the time we are born, you and I are exposed to this world of romance. From the time we were born, one might argue why, because it was the original stories we read as kids, these fairy tales. What did they end in? What were the last three words they always ended in? Happily ever after. Okay, and what that meant was when you met Prince Charming or your damsel in distress or your knight in shining armor, your life was going to be happy ever after. And all of us are holding on to that happy ever after because when you were a young, tender age of three, four, five, when someone read you those stories, you had an open landscape of a mind that hadn't yet been. Uh, bombarded with, or brainwashed and you just sucked in that information and it became part of your wiring that this person was going to set you free. And as much as then you may have read the books or someone read those books to you, you watched the movies and those movies reinforced the concept that someone was going to come flying through the door and save you and set you free or she was going to be there waiting for you and your eyes met from across the room and the romance is blue. And then it was mountain ranges or sunsets and all these amazing things, all in the name of love. So we then get even more wired to believe this concept that's going to set us free. And when we completely commercialize into it, because if we do not act as per the requirement of some cultural definition of what is seen as romance, you have not met up to the requirements. You have fallen short. Okay? And then what we do is we then live up to this dream. And the challenge then happens is you and I have this inbuilt script as to who this person must be that will set us free. And then we go into a relationship. And at some level, that person has maybe met the first part of the script, but and they're completely unaware and you go along with it because this is how you wanted your story to be. This is how you wanted your romance to be. And lo and behold, you go, may go into that relationship a week, a month, a year, two years. And as much as they're not completely following the script, you kind of accept it. But at some point, it seems your story is different to theirs. How you view love is different to how they view it. They have not fulfilled the contract of romance. And then what happens is we all, both of us end up going in different directions. We then wonder where to go next. And this then creates the conflict in the relationship because the other person has not, or is not following the script as to how we want things to be. So then what happens is we still plod along trying and fighting for that script in our minds. And we slowly but surely fall out of love. Yet we still persevere because we want that story to be true. However, what's interesting, how we actually see love is the fact that we are being conditioned by the media around us, by the stories we read, by what we've been told. And we hold on to that story above all else. And we refuse to let it go. For example, if we feel our partner needs to be this knight in shining armor, we then feel 
they have to, we have to put them up on that platform. And then Allah forces us to even take on a role. We've, it forces us to take on a role of being rescued all the time if they're going to save us. If we saw the person as being a damsel in distress, then we have to go be in this like dragon slayer role and there we are all going along and trying to save them all the time. And that then also creates loads of conflict. And then, at some point in the relationship, you recognize that you don't even have the energy to keep up with the roles we are playing. We then are arguing for something different. We want something different. And what then do we want in a relationship is authenticity as to who we are and who the person is. Because what we have done all this time in that relationship is sometimes we're selling ourselves a facade of who we are and what the person we want in our lives are. And that facade was created over the years that we have fed this information. And then we wonder why it doesn't work. And what we need to do is recognize, there's a saying, love is not when you look in each other's eyes, it's when you both look in the same direction. And then the romance is more about looking in each other's eyes. But true love is when you're both looking in the same direction. That's when you're both on this journey together. You both feel like we're going somewhere together. That the purpose, the vision, the dream of where you are going to matters more than the fact that this person who you're with is supposed to make me happy. Because who is the most fundamental person, most important person to you being happy? is yourself. It can never be another person because the other person is just like you. What do I mean by that? We all are blind people looking for the black cat in the dark room that doesn't exist. We all are struggling in the dark. And then we expect this person to save us, to rescue us, to set us free. That's, as we say, is only in the movies. And we want that person to give us, to be the end all and be all of who we are. We put them on a platform, on a pedestal, and then we wonder why they naturally fall down. Because you and I, they are living up to an image of how you see them to be and how they may make themselves out to be in order to suit yourself. So I'm not necessarily putting it down. The idea is to see romance as a journey, not as an end in itself, but as a means to an end. Yes, it's part of the process of a relationship. One might argue it's part of the courting process. And in time to come, one wonders what will be seen, how romance will be viewed in a relationship. What we're doing then is all of us in terms of a romance is imposing our script on the other person. But the script should not be an external script. We should be going into a deep internal script of who we are and our relationship with life. Because our happiness, our security, our fundamental being cannot be determined by another person. It is only determined by you. <laughs>